So here we are, Harbo Rassi. What can I say? Traditional, beautifully built Swedish yachts. And something that I think most of us who know about sailing would love to be able to take around the world. These are supremely well built, supremely comfortable and competent passage makers. And they have a huge pedigree of taking countless families around the world. So let's go and have a look inside this. It's the first 40 foot Halberg Rassi to come off the production line. And no, well, let's go and take a look. Let's start at the helm stations of the Halberg Rassi 400. We have twin wheels here, twin chart plotters, and there are a lot of hydraulic controls. This boat is about as push button as you can get. Now those twin wheels mean that you also are going to get a huge area in the cockpit for socializing, a fold out high gloss table, and bow thruster and stern thruster controls here. So this boat is very, very highly specced. Now, the twin wheels mean that you are going to get a large gatefold table, high gloss, high varnish. This is going to suffer in the tropics, so we can only assume that this boat is not going to the Caribbean. There's also a third chart plotter under the spray hood, and as always with Halberg Rassi, that signature hard dodger with an opening window. These boats are, of course, designed and have a pedigree for long passage making in difficult conditions. The lines are all captive and lead after these huge winches. So this boat is going to be pretty easy to sail single handed. Push button control and everything leading after the cockpit. Now let's take a look at the side decks and the foredeck. The side decks are wide and clear with fillers for fuel and water. As we move to the foredeck, we can see that this has a lot of space here, but let's run through some specs. So we have a 40 foot boat with a 14 foot beam and six foot four of draft. She is also a medium displacement fin killed boat, although there are deep fin and shoal draft versions available. The coach roof is white non-slip as any modern boat should be. The handrails are all antique and interesting to note now we have flush mounted hatches and captive lines. All in all, this is a very safe and easy space or would be a safe and easy space to work. And as we cast our eyes over the coach roof, let's just take a look at tankage. We have a 400 litre diesel tank and 520 litres of fresh water here. So. Huge capacity, but you probably will need a water maker on this boat. Now this boat has been fitted with the Elvstrom furling sails in the Selden mast swept back spreaders. And again, let's just run through some statistics for you for air draft. We are looking at 19.75 meters. So all in all, this actually has a shorter rig than Ruby Rose did, which is very, very interesting. But with the swept back spreaders, you are going to have to be very careful sailing downwind. Personally, I would want square spreaders and I am not sure that that exists with Halberg Rassi. I'm sure someone will be able to comment down below if it is an option. Now, aside from the fabled build quality of Halberg Rassis, they are also very, very well known for the quality of joinery inside their boats. And the Halberg Rassi 400 is no exception. As we glide gently down the companionway steps, everything is a wash with teak. It is absolutely beautiful. Now, obviously this boat has been fitted with custom carpets, which are very common in colder climes, but you do have a lot of teak work. You've got teak bulkheads, you have a huge, huge amount of beautiful woodwork to look at. And this is actually a very, very spacious boat. Also very well designed. Don't forget how Bograssi have such a pedigree for building good ocean going cruisers from deep fiddles, splash guards, everything set up so that when you are at sea, whether you are sleeping in a sea berth or whether you are sleeping in a berth, whether you're cooking at sea or whether you are simply trying to stow your equipment and the things that you need for your life, everything is really thought out. One thing I would say about this, there is not a lot of ventilation here and I personally would want to see larger opening hatches in a vessel that I was taking to the tropics. Now the galley, this boat is actually very, very similar in layout to Ruby Rose. She has the galley on port side and there is a three burner stove there. The joinery here is of an absolutely superb standard. 
One thing that I would say is that every time I have stepped on board a Halberg Rassi, I've been absolutely blown away at the quality of the joinery throughout. They really, really do take a lot of pride in the interior finish of their boats. Now, we have a big galley here, big L-shaped galley. Again, the layout of this boat is so, so similar to Ruby Rose. There is a top-down freezer and a side opening fridge. So you are gonna have cold storage here, but again, this is only a 40-foot boat, so there's only so much you can shoehorn into this boat. And now let's talk about the price. The Halberg Rassi 400, the 2022 edition, she is gonna come in at 385,000 pounds, plus options, plus tax. Now on average, I would expect to spend 100,000 at the very least on options and then add 20% tax for that. So this boat is not cheap. She is, however, a very, very well-built boat and you are paying for both the name and the build quality and the fact that the yard have such an amazing pedigree and relationship with their current clients. So you don't just pay for the boat, you also pay for the sales care, the after service care and the whole heritage that goes behind these boats. Now, as we glide through the saloon, we can see that we've got two sets of sofas, one on starboard, similar to Ruby Rose, I would have this set up as a sea berth, and I'm sure that that can be arranged. I am actually very, very fond of the armchairs that Halberg Rassi put into some of their craft. But armchairs aside, let's just take a swing around here. It is a very, very comfortable space, very open, very bright space. However, as I've said, I really would like to have seen slightly more opening hatches here. Again, nice to see that they've put a lot of little nods to the design and the aesthetic of this boat from the port lights. Again, almost a facsimile of what we had in Ruby Rose from the position of port lights to everything else. So as we pass under the double opening hatches in the ceiling of the saloon, let's move forward to the fore cabin, which is also on this boat, the master cabin. Now, as with everything, you can see there is a massive nod to detail here. I do love these four peaks. However, be aware that if you look at actually how wide it is at the head, I'm not sure that you're not going to have to, at the very end of the day, sleep with your feet pointing towards the anchor locker. So this is not ideal. That bed is a little bit too narrow for my liking. However, as you can see, attention to detail is absolutely everything. Clearly from the position of the reading lights, it is meant to be used as a double, but I actually don't think it is big enough. Anyone who owns a Halberg Rassi 400, I really would like to know your opinion on this because that to me looks like it's set up for a boat show rather than practical use at sea. However, what we do have is a very, very beautiful cabin and one that I would love to spend my night sleeping in. The wood panelling throughout gives a massive feeling of warmth and luxury. And as you can see, there is a lot of storage dotted around. Lots of lateral light coming in, as well as the opening hatch in the ceiling. So again, a very, very beautiful, very, very elegant boat. But I do think that as I look at this four peak berth, it is not going to be big enough for a couple to sleep with their heads at that end. So again, Dressed for a boat show, but I think in everyday use, you are going to have to do something different with your sleeping arrangements. Let us take a quick dance around the forward heads. This boat has two heads, one fore, one aft, and this one is almost dedicated for the master cabin. Electric flush, lots of ventilation, lots of wipe down, wipe clean surfaces that actually are gonna be impervious to mold. One thing I would have loved to have seen here, which we didn't have in Ruby Rose, is a separate shower store. This can be done. I've seen it done in 40 foot boats. However, you do need to give up some space elsewhere. But for liverboards, I think a separate shower store is actually imperative. And back through the saloon past the slightly bored broker. It was very, very early in the morning when I did this. So apologies for disturbing Hamburg Rassi and thank you sir, to them for letting us film on their beautiful boat. The chart table is on starboard and it will take a half sized chart or a full size chart folded into lots of storage, lots of fiddles. Again, about the same size as Ruby Rose's chart table. And then you also have the switching gear and everything on board for the control of your boat while at sea. This is actually a really nice area again, because it is not a deck saloon. You cannot see out while you are at the nav station and that is something that I always do want to see especially if it's rough that's one advantage of deck saloons where you can actually keep line of sight going forward but again 
nothing wrong with this nav station very very beautiful and again um really lovely to see such good quality craftsmanship in both the joinery and the execution of this boat and then finally we have twin aft cabins now these are well can i call them coffin berths almost they don't have full standing height except for right inside the doorway again this is exactly what we had in ruby rose only we did have that magnificent aft cabin However, you've got lots of storage. There is enough light in here and I do really like this woody feeling. Again, for northern latitudes, for high latitude sailing, don't forget that, you know, what you get with these boats is actually what is beneath what happens when you scratch the skin they are so so well built. So it's not just the aesthetic. You are getting something which really, really will take an absolute kicking if if it needs to so again you are buying the reputation and the build quality but what we have here two perfectly functional aft cabins so for two adults two children wanting to go around the world absolutely perfect however probably for six fully grown adults it could be quite a squeeze and finally underneath the companionway steps we have the engine this is an Volvo D260. So you've got a big 60 horsepower engine compared to Ruby Rose where you had 40, but this boat is a medium displacement boat. So you're gonna need that big engine, but a lot of good access around the engine bay for changing your filters. And also don't forget, you are gonna to need to be putting a generator into this boat as well as air conditioning. So there is room here for additional plant machinery, which will be required if you have a power hungry boat. So the Halberg Rassi 400 aft cockpit, what do I think? This is a difficult one because in the plus column is a Halberg Rassi. Huge pedigree, huge amount of cachet. Everyone's like, oh, I've got a Rassi. And those boats have a history of circumnavigating. They are superbly, superbly strong. You can go to the yard. They can reinforce bulkheads to take you through the Northwest Passage. There are so many things you can do with a Rassi. But I don't like this boat. I don't like it, and I don't like it for two reasons. And I'm going to explain this to you as best I can. But I think before that, I think you need to know where I'm coming from. We have sailed 25,000 miles in a 42-foot, 40-foot monohull with a very, very similar hull design, albeit with a swing keel rather than a fin keel. Now, a couple of points. And this is why I don't like this boat. I don't know what it's meant to do. I don't know who buys a boat at this value to do, what do you do with it? It's not an ocean going blue water cruiser. It's not, it's, it's just clearly not. And I'll tell you for why. The transom is too flat. Ruby Rose had a flat transom and she rolled like a pig. The whole thing about the boat design is that the whole thing about monohull design. If you want to cross oceans and if you want to do downwind passages, you need a stern which comes in. Now you can get that in a bigger boat because you can sacrifice internal volume. But in this, they're trying to do what Southerly did and they are shoehorning internal spacing at the expense of the whole profile. And so you've got a flat transom boat, bathing platform, beautiful, all those things. But this boat is going to roll downwind. So she's not as good an ocean going vessel as you could get in another 42 foot boat. So now you're looking at internal volume. So really, the whole message about where well, you buy a Rassi to, do, to, to go around the world, and when we crossed the Atlantic the second time from Bermuda to the Azores, there was a little Rassi, a 30 something foot boat, and that was an older design and that screamed past us. Amazing boat. So they, you smaller Rassis will do this, but I'm trying to kind of work out what are they trying to do with this boat? What, who's it for? So firstly, I don't like the fact that it's flat transcend, that they've kind of gone in to this whole internal volume over whole design. That's the first thing I don't like. Second thing I don't like, and again, this comes from Ruby Rose. We have a whole canon of videos about Ruby Rose. Twin wheels. Twin wheels, why? What, what, is, the, what is the benefit of a twin wheel? I know what the theory is that upwind you've got, you can sit on either rail, but really? This isn't a light boat. This isn't a race boat. Literally, it's like putting a spoiler 
on a Rolls Royce. It's a very luxury, it's a luxurious boat. It's a very, very luxurious boat. But why twin wheels? You're just taking up cockpit space. So I don't think that a blue water cruiser should have twin wheels. I don't think that a blue water cruiser should have a flat transom. And so that makes me think, well, who is this Rassi built for? Furthermore, if you look at the brochure down below deck, they're talking about generators, air conditioning. They're talking about, there's even a picture of a dishwasher. Like, who buys this boat? So really, I kind of think that maybe Rassi are going off message a little bit. They're going away from the blue water cruiser built for real sailors and now dishwashers and washing machines, twin wheels and uh, you know, it's, is that where they want to go with this? And for that reason, I don't like it. I don't like it. I just, I just don't think it has its place in the, in the market of, or under the umbrella of pocket blue water cruisers. So that's why I don't like it. That's reason one actually why I don't like it. Reason two, and this is a little bit, this is gonna be controversial. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up with a whole raft of Rassi owners like berating me for this. But let me just highlight a point. It's 2022, putting a teak deck on a boat in 2022, which doesn't have anything, that it, has, it serves no purpose but aesthetics. And no one is gonna tell me that in 2022 with a modern fiberglass boat that teak does anything but just look nice. It's a vanity project. And so putting a teak deck on a boat in 2022, specifying it as new and going, right, we have a teak deck. It, it is a clear vanity project, hugely expensive, like crazy expensive. Replacement costs, astronomical. A crazy, crazy amount of maintenance. Anyone, anyone that's had teak on the cockpit sole or on cockpit seats will tell you peanuts, olives, oil stains, everything stains that teak. It's hot underfoot. And I kind of think that the most important part of what I'm about to tell you is that in 2022, we should be looking to more sustainable kind of like ways of building boats. I get that they're plastic and all of you are gonna stick your hand up in the air and go, well, you're having a plastic boat, but the plastic isn't gonna be recycled and it has a purpose. The wood inside boats has a purpose. If you're building cabinetry out of plastic or wood, as long as it's sustainable, then you're kind of, what's the problem? But a teak deck, it's like the 21st century equivalent of a mink coat or using ivory. And really, like at the moment, what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of hove into your marina with your big teak deck and your 40 foot pocket cruiser and you just look like a <laughs> Because really, what are you doing it for? Why are you specifying your teak deck? Because you want a Rassi? I get it if you've bought a boat from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, or older, where if you've got an older boat, then a teak deck was something which was, you know, it was structured, it was the way that boats were built, they were laid on top of wood. But nowadays, this is just, this is something which we should all be talking about. Like, why are you embarking on a vanity project to look good in your marina? So yeah, I get that I'm gonna get a huge amount of blowback, and the reason I'm sat in Ho Chi Minh recording this, because I actually recorded the end to this video in Southampton, and I love the boat, I do, it's beautiful, it's a Rassi, but I kind of don't get what it's meant for. It's clearly not meant for the Caribbean. It's not meant for that kind of circuit, because realistically, there's not enough ventilation. The, 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 the portholes are too small. So it's medium displacement. It, this is a kind of like a it's meant to be a blue water passage maker, but it's just missing the mark, in my opinion only. Now that doesn't mean that I'm, a, I'm not a naval architect, but I have sailed enough to kind of make my mark by saying, okay, what, what and who buys a boat like this? Because I personally do not see many dedicated real sailors buying the aft cockpit version of this. Center cockpit, yeah, I get more aft space, different hull design, yada, yada, yada. But this, don't get it. So that is my review of the brand new Halberg Rassi 400, 40 foot. Now we are doing another Rassi and it's a 57 and that has a completely different purpose. So if you continue watching the series, I'll be also be reviewing the 57 
But we have a lot of other cruisers and they all have um, different purposes and different markets and different price points. So if you enjoyed that, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Can you please leave your comment on Rassies? Do you love them? Are you kind of a died in the wall? How about Rassie? That's my dream boat. That's what I own. Or are you more the kind of like alluding to the, yeah, they're trading on their image and their build quality, which undeniably is amazing. But what do you think? Let me know and uh, leave a comment down below. I will be back really soon with another episode reviewing Monoholes from 2022. Take care. Goodbye.